After the incident of table manners, I had closed a business of being a class clown at school. I had stopped making others laugh and hadn't accommodated their requests for jokes anymore. It yielded an immediate effect. I used to be the center of a circle of students but they were dispersed from me at an amazing speed. It was in my senior year and the class was divided according to the course the students had taken. In the group of my close friends, I was the only one who took the science and mathematics course while the others took the humanities, which led me separated from them in the homeroom class. Coupled with this situation, I became a loner within a month. It wasn't so hard for me, though. After all, it was just I got back to my old days in kindergarten when I hardly spoke to anyone. But a difficulty arose when the school held an assembly. To gather at the hall, the teacher made us to form into a line in pairs at the hallway. The students made a pair with each friend and waited chattering and yapping merrily. I had no one to make a pair and was standing alone silently at the tail of the line. A mere one month ago, they would scramble for me to make a pair. I realized how easy it was to become unpopular and how much time and energy I had wasted so foolishly for superficial friendship, thinking back to my long-time effort to become popular at school. Although I was willing to be unpopular again, I couldn't help feeling empty. I tasted bitter loneliness when I saw a girl walking toward me from the head of the line. She stopped in front of me and said, Would you like to go with me if you're alone? She was the smartest girl at school who was somewhat shunned by other students because she was too earnest. I had known she was a big fan of my favorite band and I had once bought a sticker sheet of the band for her before. She had been so grateful for that and brought me all her albums of the band to let me make copies. Besides those occasions, we had barely talked to each other. And now, she broke my loneliness completely. While we were walking to the hall side by side, she gleefully said she couldn't believe I was standing alone without a friend so that she made a pair with me. As for me, I couldn't believe the smartest girl sounded as if she looked up to me. Since then, we became best friends. She had everything I didn't have. She came from a rich family. Her parents were both doctors and especially her father was a renowned doctor in the medical society. She was smart, nice, sincere and courteous to everyone, even to a bus driver. Compared to her graceful attitude, I look stupid with a typical rebellious teenage behavior. I understood being cool means a person like her. Still, she always kept admiring me and even respected me for some reason. We shared passion for our favorite band and for study as she was applying to a medical school and I was to the most famed university in the city. As I was influenced by her attitude, I noticed she cured my wickedness. She totally accepted my true self and was even making me a better person. I wanted to be like her, but soon I would be taught the hard way that I could never be. A month has passed since I moved in my new apartment. Although I've been vigorously unpacking, cardboard boxes have still occupied more than half the living room. My handmade soundproof wall has been completed only on one side of the walls in my bedroom slash studio that borders on the next door. The positions of my furniture and instruments have been roughly decided for my studio. My old apartment was built on a light steel framework and had very thin walls. I was disturbed by all kinds of noise, rain, wind, cars, kids, neighbors, pros, helicopters, you name it. As my new apartment is built with reinforced concrete, it was supposed to be a lot quieter. It actually was, but wasn't as much as I had expected. Unknown clanging noise coming from some pipe woke me up for several times, or I heard footsteps form the room above or below. I had probably overestimated reinforced concrete. I know I should be content with much quieter surroundings here, but thinking about having gone through that hard and long process of the move, I want the kind of silence that I had imagined as a reward. I've been telling myself that it may get better when the whole soundproofing is done. Also, I shouldn't forget that there's no such thing as 100% satisfaction in this world after all. Audiobooks by Hitomi Woods. First audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Second audiobook, My Social Distancing and Naked Spa in Japan by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple Books, 
Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. Audiobook, The Family in Kyoto, One Japanese Girl Got Freedom by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple Books, Google Play, Audible, 43 available distributors in total. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. ご視聴ありがとうございました。88thpp.com88thpp.com